bits and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome to another episode of the Gun Like Eric and Mark here with you for what should be the finale of our player all-time rankings. We gave, we dedicated an entire video to Faker that was just ranking all of his different seasons, which was the best. So now that we go to actual mid lane rankings, we have the caveat that this is the best mid laners of all time, not named Faker. And we're gonna have to say that multiple times throughout this video. Yeah, I wanna make sure that that is very clear to people that yes, Faker would be number one, unquestioned. It is absolutely just not fair to do one of these type of comparisons, do these type of lists when you have such an unbelievable front runner the way that Faker is completely outside of his own position, outside of the whole game, everything. You look at the statistics, it is overwhelmingly in favor for him at number one. So yes, to have some interesting, to have some conversation, have some debate about it, we've chosen to talk about the greatest mid laners that are not Mr. Faker in the mid lane, and you better believe we've got some impressive ones to talk about. And let let's let the bridesmaids be the stars. Give the opportunity to the other guys. We got nine dudes to talk about on this list, all deserving to be here. And we begin with the darkest of technologies. Yes, we're talking about Super Carry doing B who was around for a long time. I feel like before people really recognized him with that world championship win in 2019 but obviously an og cled one trick but picked up multiple lpl mvps and i think people forget how good he was for a stretch on lng too i think a problem that a lot of people have is you remember maybe the the missteps and there were one or two towards the end of his career at the international level that that's where a lot of people take that knock on him and forget about what he built his career before that type of point and that is again a lot of that success domestically within the lpl climbing through the ladder climbing through these teams to find that ultimate success that he eventually does realize with fpx and that type of run that we saw from him of course one of the big ones you talked about cled over 26 professional games of it still rocking higher than a 75 percent win rate on that champion the icon in the mid lane you can go to some other wacky ones nocturne with about a 90 percent win rate in the mid lane of course Aatrox, Renekton, the Nautilus the, that we've seen before. All those Tank. iconic mid lane champions, right? Yeah, Tank, Rise, of course. Yes, this is Doin B. He was absolutely known for what type of unique champions he could pull through. And not just even the champions, but the builds, the paths that he would take with him to find success for his team. One of the ultimate facilitators, I think, as well. One of the guys who did bring the level up of everybody on the team. Not just what he was bringing Summoner's Rift. And, of course, we know all of the insane APM of keeping track of people's uh, timers and everything and doing everything oh, beyond yeah. just the individual mechanics. So, yes, absolutely one of the all-time best teammates when it comes to the mid lane. Eight spot, we jump ahead to a guy who I think we forget how good he was at the very start of his career, and that is BDD on those Longju King Zone rosters, especially because that was kind of the start of a slump for SKT. This guy remains the ultimate actual rival for Faker, especially in those early years. Oh, this is one that I really love to give some recognition to, BDD, because you're right, out of the gates in those early few years, the Longju era, BDD was the rising star, the competitor to Faker that a lot of people were looking for, right? The next, who's the next big mid laner out of the LCK, following in the footsteps of the greatest of all time, all these type of things. And BDD was able to go toe to toe with Faker for at least three, four years there in that type of period. And then we get a bit of a downtime, but recently in the last year or two, people have been reminded of the class, of the level of skill that BDD can bring to the table, even if the rest of his team isn't necessarily at that point. And I think that's both a plus and a minus for BDD. You look at maybe the individual accolades and trophies aren't quite there with some of the other guys on this list, but if you look at some of the teammates BDD has had compared to other guys on this list, we're talking some of these KT rosters, Nong Shim. He's been surrounded by four not all pro members, to say it politely, and uh, he's still been one of the premier mid laners for the better part of going on seven, eight years now. 
he is certainly one of these players where you have that question in the back of your mind what if what if we had bdd with one of these superstar style rosters these big teams where he is able to be not the one option but the one b or something in that type of one more in that facilitator role like we talked about a Dwayne b and where he was able to succeed a bdd has not been afforded those same type of luxuries even if you look at him as a as a different player of course yeah when he was on that gen g roster with ruler they were one game away for making it to a world finals and maybe you know we're talking about bdd in a very different light if that ends up coming to being but still been one of the most consistent mid laners uh throughout his entire career the only western guy on this list of course i only need to say that line and you know who it's gonna be it's caps yes no question you can talk about that 2019 to 2020 stretch where he was going toe to toe with the very best mid laners on the planet. His numbers look absolutely insane now when you say 14-time LEC champion, and that's because he's picking up like four titles a year in that new format in Europe. Uh, yeah, absolutely getting bolstered quite a little bit by the scheduling changes in the LEC, but that's neither here nor there because Caps, even without that type of little increase, would be finding himself on a list like this, accompanied by the greatest mid laners of all time, deserving of this spot. And one of the important ones to check in on because we know how dominant, how elite he has been for the LEC, for the European region. And it's always one of those important ones where I love to check him against the guy who's not on this list, Faker. The guy sitting clear above everybody on this list fighting up to reach the ladder that he is sitting on top of yes you took it check it out and man even caps with about a 65 66 career percent win rate through the lec 480 500 or so wins is about 350 400 wins behind someone like faker and still a little bit behind in that win percentage so that is again an indication of just how great faker is but to be close so that greatness at all is another one to say that Caps is deserving of this type of spot. Again, someone that we have seen incredible growth throughout his career from baby faker days on Fnatic to being the guy for not just G2, but for the entire European region. Caps, one of the greatest of all time in the Midlands. And you can talk about him carrying that torch for the entire Western scene, throw in a whole other league as well, because we've been accustomed to that at those world championships. And he's gone toe to toe with the GOAT, as you mentioned, not only comparable, not comparable, but numbers we're looking at versus him, but he's also beat him head to head multiple times. So absolutely, you can't make a list like this without referencing your boy Caps on it. Top six action, another guy who has a rivalry with Caps, which again, Speaks to how good he is, but Showmaker, no question, during that peak Dom Juan dynasty where they won three LCK titles in a row, back-to-back -back world finals, this guy absolutely burst onto the scene, quickly became the first or the fastest player in LCK history, more than Faker, to get 1,000 kills. He was the guy to watch in Korea for that basically two-year stretch. He fills in right after, kind of in that in that gap zone of BDD, dropping out from being that next up, that next contender for Faker. In comes Showmaker and the damn one explosion in the LCK and how they were able to push it. Yes, a couple rumblings about a, another very young, talented LCK mid laner who I'm sure we'll talk about on this list. But Showmaker stepped into that vacuum and did provide that type of firepower in the LCK, that pushback, whether that was against T1 and our GOAT that we are talking about at the very top with Faker, or if it was against the international competition that we saw from it, Showmaker was able to rise up to that challenge. Someone that we have seen, I think more than anybody on this list, when he is motivated, when he's engaged in the game and locked in, I think that he might be the most talented player that we're talking about on this list. And one of the most, best exciting likable personalities that you have in the scene because when he is motivated and enjoying the game nobody enjoys the game more than showmaker when he's not having to play against Cassante. You know, that's when he's really <laughs> having a good time on the rift but some even after the dynasty eras there were moments on the biggest stage in 2022 2023 where he was popping off against guys like chovy other star mid laners on the world stage and of course one of the champions that you can associate with him is that twisted fate so many games 30 plus games of it still over that 85 percent win rate my man loves to dish around with that ultimate get those gold cards out and everything else showmaker of course can't talk about that 
Twisted Fate without also mentioning the LeBlanc, one of the most dangerous ones that we have seen in the LCK. Probably the most dangerous and skilled LeBlanc we've seen in the LCK since the guy at the top, Mr. Faker and his infamous LeBlanc. And on the other side of things, you know, Showmaker has also been styled on by a LeBlanc, by the guy who's number five on this list. He's not the LCK LeBlanc star, but right up there is, of course, Knight, who ever since he made his debut as that golden left hand, the hype and expectations were incredibly high for this dude. And not only has he matched them, he's probably surpassed them, being a top three mid later in the world minimum for what? Four years now? Outside of the international success, which I understand is asking, that's a big ask to, to move aside and shift aside. Outside of all of that, this is the guy that I would be the most worried about catching up to Faker, to be able to nip at his heels, because that is the type of meteoric pace that he is on right now through the early parts of his career amassing insane amounts of win which we know the lpl schedule is going to help out with that with how often you're playing and how many times you're going around and the quality of some of these lower level teams but still those wins are impressive and that win rate is incredibly high with him having his hand his big time you know getting that fingers on the pulse of the game and knowing how he's going to change it how he's going to impact it knight is a marquee must know mid lane Whatever the super team, the latest super team in the LPL is, it's basically just what team Knight is on. I mean, you, JDG and BLG, he switches teams, goes back to back to back to back. Four titles, I think it's five titles in a row going back to his time on top esports. And he's perennially been the guy who's supposed to slay all these LCK Korean mid laners at the World Championship. Got really damn close on that BLG run, but this guy has, yeah, had an absolute meteoric rise as you mentioned ever since his rookie split and i think he's forever linked and compared to number four on this list chovy who has had similar careers tonight they started as just these young prodigies couldn't get the titles and then all of a sudden they started winning everything except for that world championship but they both have msi titles they both won four domestic titles in a row and were a clear cut above the competition in both their regions this if this was a, a horse race type of scenario have faker way way out in front of course but you'd be watching this infinite stretch and you'd be seeing the speed at which players like knight and chovy are catching up are mink are getting up to that type of level that is the scary thing when you're talking about them. And yes, Chovy finally makes his appearance here that we can talk about him and the greatness that he has exemplified in the LCK. Maybe, you know, very similar to, to Knight and where we're asking to maybe, you know, shift aside the international stuff to talk about the domestic runs and the successes that he's had. It is unavo it's unavoidable that you do have to mention it because when you're talking about these type of players, the pace that they've been going at early in their career and how close they will eventually get to catching up to Faker in a lot of these impressive statistical categories, the one where they're most likely going to be lacking is that international success. It is almost impossible to envision anybody succeeding to the same level that Faker has already succeeded at that international level. And to be at that type of comparison, that's what ne what's necessary for both of these incredibly young, talented players. And the ludicrous numbers they have domestically, you know, it's like six straight finals for a night, four titles in a row for Chovy. Absolutely nutty numbers, but Faker does similar to that at a world championship. So that's obviously where the, the GOAT sits there. But man, impressive how much we mentioned Faker for a list. That's, uh, <laughs> not going to include him. But obviously mid laners are always being compared to him. And I mentioned BDD is that OG rival to Faker, but obviously Chovy is now... The Church of Chovy is another angle where people can be a fandom of someone against Faker. He's become his own icon and idol within the CK that can rival the likes of Faker. Absolutely, I don't think anyone's going to say surpassing because of, of what Faker is, and especially with the last couple of years of world success for him on, the, on that adding in. But Chovy has picked up that mantle, talked about BDD to Showmaker to Chovy, and here we still are in the age of Chovy of the LCK. What's missing for both Chovy and Knight? These are guys who are going to climb on the all-time ranks, but the top three dudes have been around a little bit longer, had a little bit more success, and we begin with Zhao Hu, who even though he took a little stint to win an MSI title as a top laner, this guy's picked up MVPs in the LPL in his own right. He was kind of the 
Robin to Uzi's Batman to kick off his career for RNG. But you're talking about the better part of a decade where he's been one of the guys in the LPL. Despite having some bad stints, all of a sudden he's making finals with Weibo, upsetting people at international events. When he levels up, he is one of the more reliable mid laners in history. Knight and Chovy must be asking themselves if they're not asking it about Faker already. When is this guy going to step away from the game so he can <laughs> finally take over for this type of position? Xiaohu, one of the oldest uh, standing guards that we have had in the mid lane and one of the finest that we have had in the mid lane. No question about it, the career that he has carved out for himself through you know, uh, what originally started out just pretty much as pure loyalty to RNG and the way that he was playing and, and you know, signing through for them and being one of the main focus points that they would have to then this whole mercenary ass type of career that he's gone through since then to find himself with the longevity that he has had in the LPL and the recent successes, recent resurgences, I'll say, with Weibo Gaming. It feels very good to have a player like Xiaohu up here in the top three. And again, it's being able to survive for so long, like since 2016, right? There were even splits without Uzi where Xiaohu was the standout guy on RNG. He survived all these 80 carry metas where he actually looked pretty good. And whatever becomes standard or meta in play, we know that Xiaohu is going to be a guy able to step up and deliver for whatever roster he's on. Number two on this list to me is a guy who's criminally underrated when you're talking about oh, GOAT mid laners. And that is Scout. He's got a world championship under his belt. He's got multiple LPL titles. He survived different eras of EDG. Was kind of the transition to that world championship form. He's survived disappointments that EDG had at that world stage before getting that final crown. He's got multiple MVPs. And whatever roster he's on, he's the guy, the main win condition. And I think this is where I can accept some swift swapping depending on what your value is on do you value just the raw win numbers of someone like Shao who and the amount that he has played to put him in this type of position or do you go through the story do you go through each individual year and examine it and all the factors that play into it and what grade they're giving him at the end of it i think if you're doing it that type of way someone like scout will emerge as the number two the guy that has to be in this type of spot what he has done throughout his long storied career from being Faker's backup, going to the LPL, finding his own success and his own team with EDG and how things have gone. And then of course now with LNG and the road that he has been through with them. Scout is a player that I don't think time should forget when they look back on the greatest mid laners of all time. Just look at the 2024 World Championship when it was in jeopardy that he's been going to start. And teammates, ex-teammates alike are throwing money saying we've got to get this guy there because we have no chance without him. He is our star player. And I think when you're talking about players in the LPL, for me, he is without question the best Silas that you've got in the LPL. Someone I mean, with about over 30 games, a 70 win percent rate or so, just a little bit higher than that. But I think that the angles that he plays on it, the way that he is able to push and change the game on that type of champion and the way that Silas can shape things around it is a difference maker for me. Scout, one of the greatest of all times, has to be recognized. He probably had to study the Silas a little extra hard after Zeka <laughs> styled on him at 2022 Worlds. But listen, if you were doing one tournament, greatest run by a mid laner, Zeka's probably number one on this list, by the way. <laughs> uh, without question to me, the one that he... 2022, pretty much the greatest of all time type of run through, either from the greatest of greats that have all been there, of course, including Faker at the very end of it all, to the hottest of, of young prospects with Chovy and everything else. Yes, Zeka would have that type of, of recognition in that. The ultimate master of longevity, number one on this list, which is actually number two because Faker's the real number one, but we are talking about Rookie. Obviously, this guy has been on so many different iterations of IG, different squads, different organizations. He's got the World Championship, doesn't have MSI, got many, many LPL MVPs. And I think similar to BDD, there's been a lot of years where Rookie has been on bad teams, underperforming teammates or not living up to expectations. But more often than not, you're still talking about Rookie even on a bad team as one of the best mid laners in the LPL. 
I think the only thing you need to mention with those ones is talking about, well, Victory 5 to lay things out, number one, and then number two, ninjas in pajamas. So we can quite clearly get a picture that things haven't always been the best team-wise for someone like Rookie, and that's even before we talked about things that happened after 2018, which is the World Championship <clears throat> secured with IG for Rookie. We love to talk about that one. That was obviously a phenomenal performance throughout the entirety of the tournament, one that I think that is important to talk about where he started started at that tournament being highly valued and everything else and then having a loss to caps to fanatic and being able to go through that whole tournament and then culminating in that finals with the pure domination against fanatic and caps in the way that it was able to be but yes after that some lean years on ig but that doesn't mean that it's been lean years from himself rookie the way that he has been able to perform and lead the charge for any of these teams that he has been on absolutely needs to be mentioned from from his LPL run. And again, you can't mention Rookie without going way, way back and saying he was beating Faker in the LCK way back in 2014. So yes, he's got that LCK title checkmark alongside the LPL and Worlds title. Yes, you do need to dig back a little bit for that one. And, and it certainly has almost become, again, that forgotten memory given how iconic and how much of a mainstay he has become in the LPL. Again, one of these players that has, I, I believe, I'm pretty darn sure, has gotten his citizenship to be recognized. Yeah, as I think he was LPL the first LPL guy player. in the LPL to get it, so. There it is. So Mr. LPL rookie coming on through. And yes, one of the greatest mid laners of all times. And it's one of the things where it's a little bittersweet because yes, he gets to sit atop of everybody else here. But there is always the ever presence, omnipresent reminder that everybody's living under the rule of Faker sitting atop. For now, Rookie's just keeping the throne seat warm until Faker comes back from that bathroom break and says, ah, get out of here. And this, this, this is. He was at the Lincoln Park concert. You know, he's, he's bringing the crown back and yeah, he's yeah. like, ah, keep it, keep it ready. Please. It's really heavy, man. I got to sit on this throne. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to get tired. But still, got to acknowledge these other nine guys because they have had incredible careers going head to head against Faker, a lot of them. Still able to pick up some of these accolades. So big shout out to them. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flipping board.